Hey friends, welcome to Alyssa and Nate video. What's up guys? <laughs> Today I would like to talk about the importance of treating your body with respect. Mm. And Nate has a really, really cool perspective on your body as a temple and that we should be treating it with respect. So I wanted to talk with him in this video and share it with all of you. So stay tuned. <laughs> So we have been given this amazing machine. Yes. And it is so important. This is the reason why we walk. Right. Why we can film this video. Why we can hang out with our families and go to work and enjoy this experience. That's right. This is your home and it's the most important thing that you have. So we have to treat it with respect. Very true. Very, very, very high levels of respect. And if we don't, then we're gonna come across all these issues and then we're gonna be uncomfortable in this life. Yeah. And that's no fun. No. Um, but you had mentioned this amazing analogy. And every time I hear it, I think it's the greatest thing ever. So I wanted to- The truck, the, the truck, truck analogy. analogy. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And so I will pass it on to Nate and you can go on Excellent. about your Excellent, excellent. Well, analogy. like Lissa said, <laughs> Our souls are driving this human body, which is basically a multi-gazillion dollar Maserati is the way I picture it. <laughs> so the analogy that I had was, say you have, you know, for guys, you know, um, and for, for girls, you know, say you got like a BMW or convertible or something. And for guys, you know, like it's a big truck, maybe, you know, I mean, these are whatever speculations maybe it's a vw bug or a bus who knows whatever. yeah like your dream vehicle. yeah pick your dream yeah. vehicle <laughs> and your soul is you know represents basically you the driver you sit in that driver's seat and you're driving your fa favorite vehicle the soul would be you in your human form and the vehicle would represent the body now say you got a loan you know and it's a whatever, maybe you didn't get a loan, maybe you saved up and you did it properly and you bought this rig, <laughs> cash outright, boom. But you bought this vehicle. Now we put so much value on stuff that we pay for when realistically like our body was given to us for free. We were given our mind, we were given our body totally for free and we treat our vehicles better because we've paid for them, better than we treat what we've been given to for free. We put more value on it. Yeah. So. The analogy is, say you bought this whatever your dream vehicle is. Mm -hmm. I like to use the big truck as an analogy because I have a lot of friends, you know, and I see a lot of big trucks where I live, you know, the big lifted, you know, beautiful big trucks. Gorgeous surround right. system. Yeah, you know, they've right. got these running boards and when you open the door, they bzzz, come Custom out. Custom so paint jobs. Oh, it's just incredible. <laughs> I mean, you know, $80,000 or more on these, on these vehicles. And they're making sure that they get their oil changed on time, mm -hmm. the tires are rotated, you know, they get their brakes checked, all the fluids are checked, you know, the transmission fluid only, you know, every so often you've got to get that dialed in, make sure you change the timing belt every 100,000 miles. They're putting in so much work into these rigs. They, they're washing them, detailing them, getting and them then detailed. If you even lean against their truck, they're like, don't do that right. because you're going to scratch or, or it. Or slam the or door. Yeah, they treat their the trucks so amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's realistically how we should be living in our bodies. Our, you know, our soul being the driver going, okay, no, you're not putting in regular fuel into this thing. This <laughs> is the weak or only premium fuel. Okay. Yeah, and like the super premium. Yeah, Non-ethanol, you know, like I want the high grade, you know, like mix it with some jet fuel even. But we don't do that on the day-to-day -day basis as far as how to, how to treat, our, how we're treating our bodies. So we're putting in to these vehicles, like the premium, premium, say raw foods, mm -hmm. like it's going to be processed easier. It's going to be non-inflammatory for the vehicle. <laughs> it's going to burn clean. Mm -hmm. now, and you're giving the, like a huge amount and you're investing a lot into right. it. You're taking the time yeah. to seek out the best. You know, the best fuel. Yes. Yeah. You know, you're putting in the right preparation. You know, if you've got a trip coming up, you're making sure that you're thinking ahead, making sure your vehicle is all up to par. You check your tire pressure and all of these sort of things. And then what do we do for ourselves? 
We go to Taco <laughs> Bell yeah. and we get on the dollar menu. We buy a 79 cent <laughs> bean and cheese burrito because it's vegan yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> or vegetarian yeah. because it's got cheese, cheese in it. In it. Yeah. But you know, it's that's the analogy is we treat our vehicles better than we treat our bodies. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely not going to serve us in the long run considering that our soul has to drive these bodies. I shouldn't say has to. Our soul gets the privilege of being able to drive these vehicles, these multi-gazillion dollar Maseratis of a water-based machine, you guys. It's a water-based machine. Yeah. There's a proper kind of fuel that, go- that is belongs in this body. And it is tricky in this day and age because there isn't drive-through health food places. I mean, if yeah. you live in an area very possibly like, you know, San Diego or LA or maybe somewhere in New York, special places, there might be a, a place here or there, but on the regular, there's so much junk to choose from to feed yourself. So it takes more thought. It takes more discipline. And it's expensive too. For so many people, it's like they can't afford it. So they're stuck with the dollar menu. And, right. And they're like forced to put that in. To get off on a little tangent here, it, you might have like a neighbor who has an apple and a pear tree in their backyard and all those apples and pears are falling on the ground while you're going to the store to buy pears and apples. <laughs> right? It's like, what yeah. is going on with us? Yeah. But it is tricky because yeah, we, we do have the choice to take care of our bodies better than we take care of our vehicles because the vehicle is going to depreciate and it's only going to last so long. So of course, you know, depending on how you treat your vehicle, some people really don't care about their vehicle at all. Other people, you know, baby their vehicle. And, you know, coming from, um, you know, my father was really into vehicles. You know, he would take old cars and resurrect the dead, so to speak. And he would make these cars just look amazing. Yeah. You know, building roadsters and going to car shows and seeing how what guys do and girls do to these vehicles, it just blows my mind. But then you look at them physiologically you know, they're obviously not treating their bodies as good. But, you know, in this day and age, we feel like, what is treating ourselves good? I remember going camping and people would be like, oh my gosh, we're gonna eat so good. You know, we've got steaks and we've got Uh chips and dip. That's like living large. Camping is all this super low grade, ridiculous food. Yeah. It, it, you know, of course is, you know, takes us over the taste, the taste is, know what we get tricked into you know thinking that it is good for us but yeah it's interesting how we treat our trucks and our cars better than we treat our bodies but our bodies they're they're the only vehicle that we get yeah to be able to experience we can't just go okay cool I'm gonna trade this one in Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go down and get the new model you know I'm gonna treat this next model even better yeah and another thing too on the treating um, aspect that I just thought of was um, I used to listen to a Christian kind of like a, a debt, inspirational, okay. motivational speaker right. or whatever. Her name, Don, Danny Johnson. And she said something really profound was like, if you live in a shack, just like a crappy place or whatever, and you want that mansion, yeah. you want to live in that mansion or you want to get that truck Ooh, or yeah. you want to get the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams or whoever or whatever. Yeah. But what you have currently is not what you'd like, right? You have to treat what you have currently the way you would treat a mansion, the way you would treat your Maserati, the way you would treat the man of your dreams, right? right? Like you have to treat things with the same respect that you would if you had. Yeah, Yeah. because then when you do get it, are you going to treat it? Exactly. Any different? Totally. And you might even be able to draw what you're really desiring into your life by treating it the proper way. Yeah. Yeah, if you live in a little, you know, rental of mm-hmm. some sort and it's just, you know, it's mm-hmm. not the greatest, but you can definitely treat it. But you it. treat it like your mansion. Yeah, like when you're inside, you're not yeah. just, yeah, you're not just throwing stuff around, you know, yeah. on the floor and not washing your floor or cleaning <laughs> your counters and just letting it go to poo. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, if you're not doing it then, what me- what makes you think you're going to do it when you have your So mansion? true. So when people want to, like, start a workout plan, or they want to get that body of their dreams, or they want to change their diet and heal, you have to put yourself in the the after, like the goal. Yeah. So if you are going to have the body of your dreams, yeah. in order to maintain the body of your dreams, you have to do certain things every single day right. to maintain it. So if you're not willing to do those things today, 
what makes you think you'll do them when you get to your goal body? So true. Right? So yeah. we got to we gotta do the things every single day that treat our bodies the way we would be treating yeah. our bodies the way we want them to yes. be. So, yeah. And, you know, in the long run, like we were talking, you were saying how it's, you know, people will say, oh, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. There's a great meme out there, and I'm sure you guys have possibly seen different pictures. It's pay the farmer now. Mm -hmm. The farmer being the people that are growing the fruits and vegetables for us. Yeah. Not the, um, you know, the farmer, you know, that's that's sending the animals to slaughter. Yeah. yeah. But the Fruit gardener. The gardener. You know, pay the, pay the farmer now or pay pharma, big pharma, for the pharmaceutical companies later. Yeah. Pay the farmer now or pay pharma later. And it's so true, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, it's going to be even more expensive in the end because you're eating, you know, low grade, you're putting low grade fuel into your system and you're going to have to make time to go see the doctors. So that's going to take more gas and time away from you to go see a doctor. And then the doctor is going to maybe not encourage you the way that you'd like to be encouraged. They're going to get their kickbacks and promotions by getting you to be on certain medications. And some of these medications, like the statins and stuff, you're on forever. And, you know, they're amazing what they have done, but it's basically just, it's, it's an allowed people to continue on with their bad habits. Yeah. You know, in a way to where they're still degrading, they're not living the greatest life, and they, yeah, it's it's really interesting because yeah, in the end, you're spending more money right. on these doctor bills and the pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. and the supplements that you maybe need to you know that's going to help you, you know, <laughs> counteract them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so much cheaper and easier just to go back to nature and eat real food, mm -hmm. and. I didn't make the connection until my mom reversed her cancer, her kidney cancer, and it still was hard for me to make the connection to go yeah. raw because she kind of cured her cancer by going raw, completely cutting out all cooked foods. And it wasn't until I met John, mm -hmm. 86, 86 year old skier, mm -hmm. who was raw for 42 years. And being a man, mm -hmm. I connected with this guy more so than I connected with my mom. I mean, we should all listen to our moms, <laughs> but sometimes we just want to listen to our mom. And he was like, Nate, listen to your mom, you know, 42 year raw vegan here. And he's driving, he's skiing his Maserati down the hill. I could right? not keep up with this guy. He was 86 years old. And you know, for those men out there, he was still able to raise the flagpole, if you know what I mean. <laughs> because of course that's, you know, a topic that, you know, I mean, I, I'm 42 this year and I have friends who have to take medications because <laughs> their flagpole is, that's half mast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, they're in distress, right? So, and uh, another thing was uh, he cured his colorectal cancer. That's what made yeah. him go raw. I think he, I'm not sure who he inspired him. I can't remember actually who inspired him, you know, but he started, you know, the sprouting foods. I don't think it was Jay Cordage. Maybe. maybe so, because, you know, he was 42. Yeah. It was, actually, it was 44 years ago now, because that was two years ago when I met him. And so that's when I bought Lissa's book because I came home that night and was like, I'm doing this. Yeah. And I wanted to find out how can I do it where it tastes good <laughs> and I'm not just, you know, eating, you know, mono meals of fruit because I'm not necessarily, I don't have a cancer or a disease I'm trying to reverse, mm -hmm. but I definitely want to be on the raw side of things. So how can I do this? And thank heavens you had uh -huh. those books out there because <laughs> it, it took all the thinking out of it. It was a manual on how to basically fall in love with my food. Yeah. And I started to feel like a kid again. Oh, I love you know, that. like in the kitchen. Creating, uh, creating. having fun. And yeah, the connection. Right. Like you're chopping the vegetables, you're blending the dressing. Mm -hmm. You made this for your right. machine. Yeah. And you're giving yourself all of this loving energy. Right. So and this beautiful. being a water-based machine, yeah. you guys all know <laughs> that we're mostly water. And oil and water don't mix. And oil doesn't belong in this machine. Yeah. Yet oil is in so many products out there. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it goes to show that possibly some of these companies don't really necessarily have our best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. They more like want to tap into our wallets. And, you know, yeah. and some of these foods that have lots of oil and lots of salt and sugar are extremely addictive. Mm -hmm. They've worked it out. It's like a yeah, science project. It's a science project. I know. And it kind of makes me sad sometimes. Like, as a vegan, an ethical vegan, I am so happy for all of the 
products that have yeah. come out. The transitional right? The foods. transitional foods. The only yeah. problem is, is that, you know, people are going to be eating these sure. transitional foods, yeah. but they're not ideal for the body. Right. Yes, they're saving animals, and that's awesome. It's amazing. But they should be transitional foods yeah. until you get over to a whole food, plant-based diet. Yeah. High raw, High no raw. oil, Yeah, and no if, you, if you are going to have some transitional foods, and they're mm-hmm. say you aren't raw, Say you are high raw, but yeah. you're not fully raw, and you know you're going to have a, a a get together on the weekend, and you know you're going to do some barbecuing. <laughs> well, it's nice because you're able to you know barbecue up, say a Beyond Meat burger, yeah, or something. Some of these transitional foods, you know, you could throw some some plant based almond cheese on there, which is going to melt deliciously, mm-hmm. but still, it's a processed food, yeah. So it's still not optimum for the machine Mm -hmm. it's still not the best fuel that you could be putting in your vehicle yeah and that's yeah we want people to be as healthy as possible as vegans because if we are going to be junk food vegans and suddenly you come into deficiencies or maybe you get diabetes or even heart disease because you're not supplementing properly um, because everybody on the planet needs to supplement it doesn't matter what diet you are it doesn't matter it does not matter because right the soils are depleted the water yeah. isn't the same. Yeah. Our air is definitely not as clean as it should be. I mean, they knew that way back in the day yeah. when they started iodizing our salt. Like, right. there weren't a bunch of vegans that were deficient. We, must we take, all are. Yeah, we must take yeah. iodine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even as a whatever kind of diet you yeah. need. And that's why they pump it in the salt. Right. But yeah, it is amazing with these transitional foods. And like you're saying, we want to be able to be as healthy as we can for a couple reasons. One reason, you want to be showing the the people around you as well as if you're you know an influencer online or something that this lifestyle being vegan whether it be high raw or you know like um you know maybe mostly cooked but some raw Mm -hmm. you know you want to show that you can be healthy yeah as a vegan because if you start having deficiencies it's really interesting you know how like there's the memes out there they'll be like the nice you know kind of like fit looking woman and you know they're like you know <laughs> yeah oh you know like i ate you know steak and eggs for breakfast like oh my gosh you, you look, look amazing. amazing but then you know that same exact picture of that fit looking girl exactly the same picture like oh yeah i'm a vegan and i had like fruit for breakfast then people the mindset is like oh my gosh you look unhealthy yeah and even though it's the same picture it's just the perception in the mind mm-hmm. where we think that it's deficient but it Any diet on the planet can be deficient. Um, It depends on how much you're eating, how much processed food you're eating, how much you might need to supplement. There are so many factors that come into play, but like you said, we need more healthy vegans out there because you know, if somebody gets sick and they're say an influencer and they fall off the vegan lifestyle, then a lot of people are like, well see, veganism isn't good, right? Right, But and back to that picture, I think people might look at the picture and be like, wow, she had steak and eggs for breakfast. How does she maintain that figure? Because yeah. it's nearly impossible to maintain, I shouldn't say nearly, I mean, there's definitely, it, it is, a nearly impossible might be the right term because it's very hard to maintain a healthy, you know, healthy looking body um, and feeling good. Yeah, and when, feeling good, that's when the you, key. Yeah, when yeah. you are, you know, eating lots and lots of, the wrong kinds of food for this vehicle, the wrong kinds of fuel for the vehicle. Yeah, you might look good, right, with right. a lot of exercise on top of your steak yeah. and eggs. Yeah. But what's it look like inside? Yeah, and that's the and issue. Say that with pipes. with you know any kind of lifestyle. You know, say if you're not, yeah, balanced mm-hmm. and eating properly. You know, say it's interesting how you could be putting in the super high grade fuel. Say you're putting in like premium gas into your vehicle. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, just, you know, like, I feel like putting diesel in tonight. <laughs> and your, your vehicle starts to like, you know, sputter and putt and it's not going to run. And then you're like, okay, maybe that didn't work out. Like, you know, let's, let's put the regular gas back in, you yeah. know, and then you're running regular and then you're going back to premium and you're bouncing all around. Your vehicle's going to have some issues. Yeah, totally. Another thing too, uh, where this is just an analogy, um, but you know how they used to say, like, if you're using regular oil for your oil changes and then you switch over to synthetic? Oh, yeah. You can't go back right. to the regular oil because the synthetic is, like, so much better, yeah. right? So it would be, like, the cooked food and then the raw food. Yeah. It's like, you go on to the raw food, you're like, you can't really go back to the old oil because, right. like, this stuff is, like, so much better for yeah. your vehicle. So, yeah. And, and not to mention, too, 
or you know, I should say also to mention, <laughs> I will mention it, <laughs> is that we want to be, if you are plant-based or you're an ethical vegan, mm -hmm. you want to be able to be quick-witted, having your mind work properly, mm -hmm. and be a good voice for the voiceless. Yeah. And so if you're having health issues yourself, maybe you're second-guessing your whole, you know, concept of what is healthy and what you should be doing because if you're only eating transitional foods because there's yeah. a lot of deli delicious plant transitional <laughs> foods out there you got mm -hmm. coffee creamers you got ice cream you got butter you got you know cheeses and burgers. meats and sausage yeah. and burgers and you know Tons pizzas and lasagnas and macaroni and cheese <laughs> i mean you name it yeah they're making these products out there for people to transition into a plant-based lifestyle but yeah if you're transitioning from the old school standard lifestyle to a, you know, the new transitional vegan food lifestyle, you're you're not going to be any more healthy than. Yeah, you might not be getting like the IGF one and some of the stuff that's right. in animal products, but that just doesn't like just because we can eat something yeah. doesn't mean that we should. Right. Exactly. Because... And that's where, if you love your vehicle. You discipline yeah. yourself. Yeah. Either way, that was the analogy, the truck yeah. analogy. The truck analogy. Or we could call it the vehicle analogy. Yeah. You could even apply it to anything that you love in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, too, um, like my camera. Oh, yeah. My camera, I spent like $5,000 on just the body of yeah. my camera. And it's like, that's like a very important piece. Yeah. Right? I charge the batteries. I, and you know, clean the sensor. You're not just going to go lay it in the sand. <laughs> of course not. So, <laughs> hilarious. Um, or like I said, like your mansion. Right. Right? Your house being like super beautiful and all of that. So you want to, you can use the analogy to something that you have that's very important to you. Like right. maybe you don't have a car or a vehicle and you don't care about it, but you have other things in your life that you that really you treat. cherish. Yeah, that you cherish and you treat really properly. Yeah. Even our pets. I was just gonna say, yeah. maybe, it, yeah. maybe it be a pet. Yeah. And you only feed your pet like the premium <laughs> kinds of food. You're like, I'm not buying the food with a bunch of filler. Yeah. I want the best food that my cat or my dog or my horse can have. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, and you're gonna, like you spend a lot of money on these animals too. Like some people I've seen, like they have carriers that are all right. pretty and they have like clothes for their dogs. Yeah, they're and wheeling stuff around in a little stroller <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, and they treat, or even their kids. What about kids? Like oh. when you have a baby yeah. and this baby is pristine and perfect and you're like, yeah. I don't want anything in this baby, yes. right? We are so protective right. of what our kids eat. Yeah. To an extent, I mean, there's some people who don't care. Right. <laughs> but if you really care about what your child is eating, like you're like, no sugar at school, no sugar at the friend's house, you always pack your food for your kids, yeah. and you try really, really hard because you don't want this child eating dyes and right. processed foods and all of this stuff, yet you eat it, yeah. right? Like we should be treating our bodies the way we would treat a pristine brand new baby. Yes. Right? Exactly. We need to protect it we really do yeah. it's so important it's so important staying hydrated and sleep sleeping properly moving yeah like movement our bodies crave movement um healthy spine healthy life like make sure that your spine is like flexible and your muscles are flexible move that body drink the water i was just going to say that too yeah. when you said movement that reminds yeah. me if you don't drive your vehicle right and it just sits yeah. there I mean, maybe it's a, it's a, you know, the trailer queen in the uh, roadster community, they're called. It's a trailer queen. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't drive yeah, they them. Don't they drive they them. put yeah. them on a trailer, and they get it to the show. They put a mirror mm -hmm. underneath it so you can see how clean it is, and they're on the underside. And, you know, they might fire it up every once in a while. But eventually, say you don't do that. Say you're putting in the best fuel, mm -hmm. but you're not moving. You're not, you know, that car, if it's a car, it's yeah. going to go back to what it was made of, which is the earth. It's going to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And even if you put that fuel into the car and you don't use the fuel, the, fuel the oxygen out. dissipates out of the fuel yeah. and then you can't even drive. Right. <laughs> right? So, yeah, yeah. we I have guess. to drive our bodies yeah. to use the fuel yeah. that we're putting in. We were built and designed to move. We were yeah. designed to walk and climb and even sprint at times. Yeah. And yeah, if we don't jump on a little trampoline or rebounder or lymphasizer, mm -hmm. we like to call them, mm -hmm. and take a nice brisk walk and maybe even just sprint every once in a while. And stretch. 
stretch out. Yoga. Oh my goodness, stretching is so, so good. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the the food that we put into ourselves is only a small aspect. Yeah, it's it a is. major aspect, but it is really only a small aspect. Stress management, yeah. you know, setting intentions for the day, meditation, that could be... Keeping a positive mindset. Right. Learning. It, yes, yes, learning, constantly learning, finding out what other people are doing. If we get stuck into those old mindsets... Yeah, ruts. Ruts, yeah, then that's not a good thing either. So anyways, we got off onto a, a little more <laughs> of a tangent, you know, yeah. but it's Hope good. you guys enjoy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you guys liked this video, please click like and subscribe to my channel, Lissa's Raw Food Romance, and head over and subscribe to Nate at Raw Natty Nate. Thanks, guys. You can find me on Instagram at Raw Food Romance, on Facebook, Lissa's Raw Food Romance, on Twitter, I'm active. On Twitter, we're doing daily raw formations, so they're little affirmations that you can read in the morning. Oh, those are great. They're going to be awesome to help. Uh, shift your mindset. Yeah. Um, my Twitter account is at Raw Food Romance, and I'm on Snapchat occasionally. <laughs> uh, Lissa Raw Vegan and Nate, you can find him. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, and Twitter. Raw Natty Nate. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for sharing my that. Pleasure. It was a really great chat. Yeah. And I hope you guys enjoyed. We will have plenty more to come. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. So yeah. I'll be starting a podcast too. Yes, you were starting a podcast yep. too. Yeah. Because really it's all about getting this message out mm -hmm. and connecting with more individuals. You'll connect with certain people, I'll connect with certain people, and we all help each other. We all help yeah. each other just kind of wake up to a different reality that we could possibly attain. Mm -hmm. It's it's totally up to us. Yeah, totally is. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed and Til next time, until guys. the next video, fruit on. <laughs>